Steve, uh, your first impressions on that performance? Uh, yeah, very pleasing. I mean, I think uh, we tidied up a lot of what was wrong the week before and uh, Type 5 were a lot better and provided a platform for us to play off. Uh, I thought um, Damien answered a lot of questions that uh, a lot of the uh, the fans and and uh, the media were raising, and um, you know he showed showed that he's a very very capable uh, footballer at ten and can drive a team around the park. Um, and and some of the other younger guys <coughs> played particularly well, and then you chuck in some of the older guys. So that was a good night for us. Steve, the defence, how happy with that tonight? Especially early on. Yeah, well, we asked ourselves to do a lot of it. Um, you know, and there, I think there's a couple of lessons there. Like we, the six minutes where there was one scrum, I think, and and uh, all the rest of the time we were defending. So we got the ball back and then we kicked it and didn't kick it out and had to defend again. So um, for them to only score the one try that they did get, uh, very, very pleasing. And, and that defence went right throughout the night. I think they got better and better as the night went on. And... We tidied one or two little things up at half time and the boys responded to what uh, Stormy wanted and you know, so we can be proud of that as well. And how impressed with the performance of Scott Barrett? Yeah, probably his best game in the jersey, I think. Um, he's been working hard on on not trying to overthink things and just get out there and do it. And um, tonight he, he did that really, really well and uh, got you know big rewards for it because his instincts are good and... Um, yeah, just some wonderful things, and allowed us to to give the skipper, you know, wee break, who's had you know big three weeks and a lot of footy in ahead of him as well. So that was pleasing. Given the way that Scott's playing, you get a very good. Um, sorry, hey mate, you've got a very good lock forward waiting in the wings. Would there be a temptation to try and get all three of those into a starting pack by moving Scott to blindside? No. None at all. No. Because they're three very good locks, but I can't find a loose forward uh, better than uh, Liam Squire there. So uh, when he's better than Liam Squire, I might think about it. But I haven't talked to Fozzie, but ask Fozzie if he'll think about it. I'm just answering my own question. Can you see him covering both as you ask Jackson? Yeah, you know he's done that in the past, hasn't he? Like he did it really well on the South African game last year in North Harbour. So that wasn't your question. <coughs> Uh, a few words on your debutants today. Uh, Himmelpool came on a bit sooner than maybe intended, um, but the other guys also uh, played all right. Yeah, look, I think both uh, Himmelpool and, and uh, Shannon, uh, Jack and, and Richie, who didn't get a lot of game time, but all four of them will be pleased with how they performed. And you know, Shannon had 80 minutes, and <clears throat> that wasn't going to be our intention, if I was being totally honest, but uh, he got a 10-minute breather there when he got his stitch, so... Uh, that allowed us again to give the big fella next to me a, a breather. So uh, as the game went on, Shannon got better and better, and Jackson, you know, all week Jackson's looked really comfortable in our group, and um, surprisingly uh, picked things up really quickly. And and um, for a new guy, you know, surprisingly, as I say, he looked very, very comfortable, and and he played like that. Jamie in the middle here. Uh, Sam, was it nice to be able to get through a game without having some yellow or red cards to get dished out? Yeah, <coughs> um, I, th I thought it was really good. Steve touched on it um, before. It would have been really easy in that first few minutes to give away some penalties, but we talked about uh, trusting the system and um, I thought the boys really looked after each other and um, that kind of set us up for the rest of the game. It would have been easy to um, give away penalties early on. Um, and normally when you do that, that flows on to yellow cards. Steve, how much confidence does this series give you as you now look ahead to the Rugby Championship? And I'm going to double down. Is there also a key area that you need immediate improvement in ahead of that tournament? Oh, we just need to get better right across the park. But, you know, we're introducing a whole lot of new stuff uh, that takes time. And, and we're introducing, you know, some new players. But we've got people like Barrett, Reid... Squire, Ratulik, just to name a few, Nipo Lalala, another one. <coughs> yeah, we've got a number of people that aren't here, so that we'll bring them back in and uh, hopefully um, it'll make us even stronger than we are at the moment, having them in our squad. So 
Um, you know, the, the day we think we've arrived, we're finished. So we've just got to keep working hard. I think South Africa and Australia are both uh, really improved teams and playing well, and uh, they're going to be great challenges. And Argentina seem to be uh, ticking, ticking along pretty good in the <coughs> in the Super Rugby competition. So, um, and they're going to have a new coach. So, uh, you know, they're going to be a surprise package as well. Phil. Steve, Steve, I've just been looking online and already there are a couple of headings and different websites saying another referee shocker about the John Lacey and the Damien McKenzie try. Now, you analysed the card in Auckland very well, I thought. What did you think about Damien's try and the part that Lacey did or didn't play in him scoring it, please? Uh, well, I know the rule reasonably well. I've read it for years as a player. I thought I was a better ref than I was player. Uh, and... And there's nowhere in the in the rule book that says a referee can cause obstruction. Uh, so he, he's got to stand somewhere, uh, and uh, it's not our fault that our guy ran close to where he was standing. It's happened to us a few times in the past. So, um, yeah, and like I think people are clutching at straws there. I mean, what do they want him to do? Click his fingers and disappear or something? I, I don't know. I, I don't understand why they'd get upset by it, personally. Right here, Ian. Yeah, Steve, just uh, from your point of view, uh, 500 days out from the World Cup, just how, yeah. what impression this, t this French team made on you? Uh, and what, what do you think that they, how do you think they can improve uh, from here to the World Cup? Uh, it's nice that you know how many days is the World Cup. Um, Look, we, we said right from the beginning that we, we think France are an improving side. Like their Six Nations uh, tournament was, I thought, really good. A big improvement on where they'd been. Their defensive record was uh, the best in the world at that time. Um, they were very unlucky not to beat Ireland. Uh, you know, the number two side in the world at the moment. And I think it was a penalty kick or a drop goal or something right on full time or near about full time. Uh, they lost another couple of games you know, by less than five points. So they're right in the hunt. And um, they've come out here at the end of their season. Uh, you know, in the first two test matches, uh, you know, it was a real, a real fight. And it um, wasn't until tonight that we really probably got some dominance, um, you know, for the whole 80 minutes. And even then tonight, like the first six, seven minutes, we were under the pump. and. Right up until half time, it could have gone either way for the either side, really. Uh, but we, we managed to hang in there and, you know, convert some of that pressure that we were applying uh, our way. So I think they're going good. Uh, question down here for, from Sav. Sam, that's likely to have been the last June test you'll ever play, given the World Cup next year and the rescheduling. Um, are you pleased to see the back of the? June tests, given they break into super season? Um, can't say I've thought too much about that, um, but... He just wants to give you a gun so you can shoot yourself. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. can't say I've thought too much about it, but I think um, as rugby players we've got to adapt all the time um, on the field and off the field's no different, so um, whatever the season structure is, we've just got to deal with it. We done or done? Well, no, there's got to be one question for Mr. Foster. The backs well, played it. pretty outstanding tonight, oh. so. Oh, okay, we have got. Yeah, yeah well, oh. Sav says he's got one, this which will be a lot be better really, than the last really. one he asked. <laughs> this better uh, be good, Sav. Don't know, don't know about that. Hang on. It would have to be better than his think, loaded question before. Think, think quickly. Jack Goodhue. There we go. Um, <laughs> very solid from what I could see. Uh, how 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 much uh, how impressed were you with his debut? Yeah, no, look, I think um, ran some great lines. I, I guess what I liked about him is he got the ball a number of times in some pretty tricky situations, but he made really good solid decisions. He, he tidied up a few things and got a lot of respect for the French midfield. And I think that in all three tests, you know, particularly with Remy and Wesley today, they got a lot of experience and, and they know how to defend well. And I thought Jack dealt with that pretty good. So, you know, overall, good learning curve would be better for that.